Hey guys, this is Miss Richards. We are looking at the Unit 1 test review today um, to make sure you have this review. Okay, we'll just get right into this. Question 1 says, given the sequence, negative 4, negative 1, 2, and 5, find the 28th term. Okay, so we're not going to want to sit here um, and add 3 every time. As you can see, that is your common difference. We are adding three. So we're going to want to use the explicit formula. The explicit formula says a sub n equals a sub 1 plus your common difference times n minus 1. And your n stands for the number in the sequence you're trying to find. Okay, so for this sequence, the number we're trying to find is the 28th term. So a sub 28 equals your first term, which is negative 4, plus your common difference, which is 3, times the number in the sequence we're trying to find. We're trying to find the 28th term, minus 1. Okay, to solve this, whoops, forgot to put the 1. To solve this, you just want to do what's in parentheses first. So this is going to be a sub 28 equals negative 4 plus 3. 28 minus 1 is 27. Okay. When you multiply 3 times 27 and you subtract 4, I'm just going to save some time for us, you end up getting 77. So the 28th term is 77. Number two, it says if a sub 1 equals 6 and a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 minus 3, find the 14th term. Okay, this tells us our first term is 6. Um, your common difference is negative 3. And we want to find the 14th term. So we're basically using this same formula. n is going to be 14. A1 is going to be 6, and your common difference is negative 3. So A sub 14 equals your first term, which was 6, plus your common difference. In this case, it's minus 3 times N minus 1. N is 14 minus 1. Okay, when you plug all of that in, just to save us some time, A sub 14, you end up getting a negative 33. Okay. Number three, it says write the explicit formula that represents this sequence. Okay. So first things first, our first term is four. To get from four up to seven, we added three. So our common difference is three. And that's basically all you need to write an explicit formula. So we're going to say a sub n equals our first term, which is 4, plus your common difference, which is 3, times n minus 1. And that is your explicit formula. Number 4 says the costs of purchasing Various numbers of notebooks are shown in the table. How much would it cost to purchase 18 books? Okay, so I'm going to scroll down and move the camera down a little so you can see this table. And if you'll notice, on the right side, the cost, that's going up by 3. Every time we are adding 3 on this Y side or the cost side. Okay. On the left side, you're adding two. The easiest way to approach this, I believe, is to just continue this table. So we're going by twos here. So what's ten plus or sorry, what's eight plus two? That would be ten. Okay. And what's twelve plus three? Well, that would be fifteen. What's ten plus two? Twelve. 15 plus 3, 18. 12 plus 2, 14. 18 plus 3, 
21. 14 plus 2, 16. 21 plus 3, 24. And 16 plus 2 is 18. 24 plus 3 is 27. Now the question asks, how much would it cost to purchase 18 books? So this is the books column, our X. And the Y is the cost. So uh, it would cost $27 to purchase 18 books. Again, it was this right here. Okay. Question five. We're looking at the graph. I'm going to move this down. Move this down a little bit more so you can see the whole thing here. Uh, it says use the graph to answer the questions five through seven. Given the graph of f of x, find the value of f of 2. That just means when your x value is 1, 2, what is the y value? That's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's going to be 8. So we're going to say f of 2 equals 8. Question 6. What are the x and y intercepts of the function to the right? Okay, our x intercept is where the graph crosses the x axis that's here. And that's going to be at negative 2, comma, 0. The y intercept is here, and that's at 0, comma, 4. Number seven says, write the equation for the linear function graphed to the right. Okay. So we have to look at a few things. Again, your y-intercept is four, so that means your b value equals four. Sorry, that's my cat. He's on a scratch pad. Um, so yeah, our b is four. And we just have to come up with the slope. So if we look at the points we have here, we can tell the slope. We're going to rise 4 and we're in 2. So what is 4 divided by 2? Well, that's just 2. So that means that m is just 2. So m is 2, b is 4, the equation y equals 2x plus 4. Okay, that is the first page. That is through question seven. Okay, turn the page over. Question eight says, graph the function 4x plus 2y equals 8. Okay, great. Uh, there's a few ways you can do this. You know, when you are on your... When you're on the um, test, you will have access to Desmos. And I'm going to show you how to use Desmos right now. So let's go to Desmos. We're going to type in this function. We're going to type in 4x plus 2y equals... Eight. Now, if we go here, we can actually look at points on the graph. Okay, we see that 0, 4 is on the graph. We see that, let's see, let me hover over that. We see that this point's on the graph, 2, 0. This point's on the graph, if, there we go. That's 3, negative 2. So we've got enough to graph this just by typing that in. Okay, so I'm going to go back. All right, so we had a few points. Hold on, let me make this bigger. Right, we had, what, 0 and 4? We had 2, 0, 
What was that? Third point. What was that? Negative two. Sorry, positive three, negative two. Is here. Okay, so if we look at this, if we rise to a nine one, that's our pattern. Just rise to one one. Rise to one one. So if we can figure it out. And we can get a lot of points. Or you can go down to the right one. Down to the right one. Down to the right one. There we go. We have a lot of points. Sorry, you can't see. So now we're just going to connect those points. And we have graphed that equation. Now, if you were to put this in slope intercept form, yeah, if you were to put this in slope intercept form, it's negative 2x plus 4. Your slope is negative 2 over 1, and your y intercept is 4. Okay. Number 9 says use set notation to describe the domain and range of the function from question eight. Okay, so this is a linear function. Linear functions are gonna have a domain and a range of all real numbers. So in set notation, what does that look like? So the domain is gonna be between negative infinity and positive infinity. So X is going to be in between negative infinity and positive infinity. Same for y. y is going to be in between negative infinity and positive infinity. Okay, that is set notation for all real numbers. Number 10 says, what is the range of the function y equals 2x for the domain um, x is between 4 and 8? Well, all you have to do we're going to plug in a 4. We're going to plug in an 8 for x and see what that gives us. So if we plug in a 4 into this function, if we plug in a 4 for x, that's going to be 2 times 4 plus 3. That's going to give you 11. If we plug in an 8, y equals 2 times 8 plus 3, that's going to give us 19. So that means um, the range for when the domain is between, um, sorry, you can't see that. When the domain is between 4 and 8, that means your range is going to be in between 11 and 19. You can put that in set notation. It's going to be y, your, your range values, is going to be between 11 and 19. So y is between 11 and 19. Okay. Question 11. Use the graph to the right to answer questions 11 through 12. Is the graph discrete or continuous? This would be a discrete graph. Number 12. What is the range of the graph? Well, it looks like we're starting at 2. And we go to 7. And we have in between values. So our range is going to be 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 6, 6.5, and 7. Sorry, I ran out of space. Okay, and then number 13, write y equals 5x minus 7 in function notation. f of x equals 5x minus 7. Okay. Now, the video is going to stop at 15 minutes. I'm going to stop going over these questions for now. I'm going to make a second video for the numbers 14 through 20. Okay, I'll see you in a bit.